The second big problem we have is our young people. Again, let us not cheat ourselves. It is our young people. We have a youth bulge that if not properly handled can be a time bomb that can blow this country to pieces. And the handling of that has to be done extremely carefully. Extremely carefully. That is not a problem of this community or that. It affects us all. But how we manage it, we must manage it very carefully. We cannot manage it through inciting them. All right? We must manage it by including them, including them in our decision-making processes. And that is why I said in Kisi, during the Mashuja Day celebrations, if we are to deal with our youth problem, we must deal with our economy. And there is no country in the world that has ever developed on a five-year cycle of politics. You can never develop on a five-year cycle. And if you cannot develop your economy, how do you create the jobs? If every cycle you spend one whole year, and in this case, in our case, it's two years, before the election campaigning, then you spend another two years after the election campaign trying to sort out the political mess. Umebaki na mwaka moja kufanya kazi. Uchumi kweli tutapanua. Wenzangu. Vijana kweli tutawapatia kazi. Ya? Na ndipo niliwambia juzi wakati tulikuwa tumeenda kuanzisha mradi wa hawa vijana. Na nikawambia my friends. Be very careful. It is very exciting and it is very sweet. But we must stop this culture of use and dispose of our young people. And instead, <laughs> develop and deepen a process, which again I want to thank these gracious men and women because they have looked into those issues, of how we can systematically and in a very clear and thought out manner enable our young people who are our future to be a productive part of Kenyan society. And nobody can do that. I can't do it alone. We must be together and we must engage in that conversation together. And I strongly believe if we just deal with those two issues, and I know there are many other issues. All right, former President Uru Kenyatta there, sentiments about the youth belt, the youthful, or the youth dividend in this country, and how we need to uh, tap into it. If not, then it's a powder cake waiting to explode. We continue pace with uh, the conversation here on Wungozi today with our panelists, and now we joined Alfred Wenya as well. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. I thought uh, for a moment maybe you went to the streets as well. That's why you're running late. Or if you slept through the alarm. <laughs> Welcome. We're supporting that from the backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your sentiments uh, this morning. We've uh, had a conversation, of course, uh, around it. And uh, we want to also hear from you just to get into Dr. Remarks. Uh, thank you. I think uh, um, what we are at a pretty interesting time uh, in our country. And... Uh, we are seeing people oppose um, the finance bill. Um, I think uh, this year, uh, uh, like the youths have said, they, they took over. Last year I was very active in uh, opposing the punitive uh, housing uh, uh, levy, mm -hmm. which I still believe to date is uh, illegal and unconstitutional. Um, but I think what is interesting, and we should be asking ourselves, is why the uproar 
I mean, we, we've, we've had finance, finance bills for as long as the country has existed. And why are Kenyans, you know, up in arms around, around taxes? We've had taxes. We've never really had people go to the streets around taxes. So I think we need, we need to really look at this thing in a broader way. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just give a couple of highlights. So the issue, we miss, sometimes we miss the point when we look at the taxation per se. Uh, if you look at it, real income of Kenyans has been coming down for, for the last, uh, you know, three, four years. In fact, is in the negative. Every Kenyan, uh, our, our income has gone down by, you know, uh, an average of 5%. Uh, and, and then on the other hand, you look at um, inflation, you look at the cost of living. The cost of li living has actually gone up considerably. Uh, what I'm saying here is that Kenyans are actually poorer that is one thing that we must actually look at. Uh, government itself, despite all these rafts of uh, measures to, to tax literally everything, are not getting as much money as they actually want. So what is the issue here? Uh, I mean, we're not getting increased investments in our country. We are really not getting that. Uh, we, we hardly have any money to, to, to spend on, uh, on development as it actually were. So the bigger issues that we must actually look at all the way you know, from fiscal policies to government on, uh, on policies to the way government spends and so on. We need to locate this within that particular debate. Then we'll be able to understand why, why you know, so many people are angry with the finance bill the way it has actually been, uh, been, uh, been framed. Yes, yeah, so I think uh, I'll, I'll start from there, mm -hmm. uh, Dibala, and then of course uh, you know, build up the case as we go. Um, and, and, and of course, so what you're seeing uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, when we're seeing these, uh, these uh, pe young people on the streets, in fact, my own children, mm -hmm. my own children went, went to the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I've, 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 got, I've got a daughter who has just finished, uh, finished uh, uh, is meant to be joining university. I've got a son who's a third year in university. They actually went to the street. Uh, they work with me in the office. And they said, Dad, we have to go on the streets. And I asked them why. And uh, of course, it is quite interesting, like, like, like we're saying here. These people had actually read the finance bill. We believe, you know, forget about this nonsense that Kenyans don't read. Yeah. They do, especially when it's, it's things that, uh, that affect them. And they're able to point it out. Uh, why, are we being, uh, why, why are we, as you've been taxed for, you know, digital content? Very, very specific <coughs> things. Um, Quite a lot of issues of, of, of new levies coming in, uh, of old ones that you know, are actually being retained and so on. Yes, yeah, so I, th I think these are the fundamentals that we must actually look at. Why are Kenyans actually angry? On one hand, Kenyans are actually poorer. We are not understanding this thing. On the other hand, we are expected to pay more taxes. And this now, of course, is affecting everyone. From Wazes, you know, uh, with their pension uh, be being taxed on that side, to young people, uh, you, are, you are talking about. Uh, you know, people with significant, uh, you know, uh, economic presence. Mm. <laughs> uh, all sorts of vague terminologies and, and everything that, uh, you know, this government defines is then taxed. Yes, so, 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 so I think we, we do have a problem as a country. Uh, for me, it doesn't really matter whether the finance bill goes through or not. We do have a fundamental problem. And, um, and it's a very, very deep problem. Because, as it were, we actually have a very lazy uh, executive that does not want to look at fundamentals uh, in this country, does, that, that does not want to look at growth uh, and how we can actually grow, that does not want to look at uh, you know, jobs and jobs creation and how that is done, that does not want to look at businesses and how businesses actually you know, grow and make monies and so on. You, you're not seeing a coherent plan. That doesn't look at the Kenyan, the Kenyan that you know, we're bleeding to, to death and, then, uh, and asking, okay, fine, what is these people's situation? Where do they need to be cushioned? Where can we actually ensure that people are getting um, more money in their, uh, in their pockets as, uh, as it were? So th this, this comes in, and then the way it's done, really, the way it's done is that um, members of parliament um, are literally forced uh, to vote in a particular way. Mm -hmm. They are literally forced to vote, to vote in a particular way. Uh, and, 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 and this thing is managed from state house. We know that's, that it is for a fact. So the opinions of Kenyans is actually, you know, not taken into consideration, either through our, our representatives or directly when people pick it on the streets. Yeah, so I, I think this, this is a situation we're in, I, and I don't really think it is a good place to be in. Mm -hmm. We are starting to hate our government, mm -hmm. the ones who don't hate it already. 
We are actually starting to hate our government. Our government is starting to become an enemy of the people. The government doesn't care what I feel. The government doesn't care whether I have a job or not. The gov all those youths that you're talking about, how many, uh, how many jobs have government <coughs> created for the youth? Hmm? Yeah. All we hear are stories and stories and stories. Meanwhile, the little places where the youths are hid hiding, government comes in and says, okay, fine, we shall tax you on this and we shall tax you on that and, and tax you on that. These are the issues that we actually need, need to deal with, the fundamental governance issues of our country. Mm -hmm. Fundamental yeah, governance issues. Maybe Professor can help us here. Uh, we talked about people reading this bill. It's, three, it's 136 pages with 564 paragraphs. And professors are known, I mean, you... To tease out everything uh, from yeah, that, yeah. Um, uh, could you, uh, maybe you could tell us, I mean, if he's been able to go through that and distill it and... Uh, um, and pack it for us. Yes. Yeah, we, we've got a whole time to actually right. do that. So you can mull over that as we come to no uh, Kipruto no. Rapkirwa on this as well. Because he, he raises a fundamental... It is him. Oh, yeah, sorry. it is him. Okay. Then, okay. You know, yeah. you know, he demand, raises a fundamental issue. Demand, yeah. Dr. Kidero is creating a situation that we must be lost. We might be lost in details. Really, what we are coming to do here is really not to analyze the bill clause yeah. by clause. That is the job of members of parliament. For us is to look at the total framework, where the government can make savings, where the government can reduce wastage, where the government can improve tax collection, so that we just don't increase the tax base, Correct. and we do not know how are we taxing these people. What are they giving us? When you tax me, are you encouraging me to produce more? Because the truth elsewhere in the world, even in the young nation, uh, where there is a young president the other day, uh, Senegal, he has reduced taxes. Sunil in UK, he reduced taxes. And if you are to think it's about today, Margaret Thatcher reduced from 95% to about 40% certain issues that were taxable. And the economy was able to give more money than is the case. Remember the economic stimulus of Mike Bucket. Remember in U U U USA, when there was depression, they made people dig holes and fill, backfill for purposes of giving money to the population. So uh, l let us not go into, uh, we will be losing uh, this forum as Umgosi Forum if we were to go close by close and I do the work I was doing 20 years ago. That is the work of Simiu, the member of parliament for Chirangani, to give us close by close. But what we need to do is, why are you bringing things that even are cake like saying somebody who is 25 years living with me in the house right. and does not have effective source of income must pay 300 shillings, which is like the code of the, of the colonial system, Correct. where our elders, my father and others, they are to borrow the code from somebody who has paid to cross the street to the, to the other village. And when he comes back, he hands over to the owner of that. And when he's bathing at the river and he sees an Ascari, the guy takes his clothes and runs into the bush. This is what the president does not seem to realize. We are in another dispensation. Tax somebody doing something gainful. Don't tax somebody just because he has some property, he has a car, he has, he has a piece of land. Soon they'll be saying for every one acre that you own, you'll be taxed 10,000 shillings per, per year because that is the equivalent of hiring a piece of land in Kitale to plow. Dibal, I, I, I think what we need to advise this regime is to reduce wastage. Mm -hmm. We need to reduce theft. We need to reduce leakage. And we need to improve ways of collecting taxes. Let us make it friendly. Let us make it effective. Because at times when you open some of these uh, linkages, whether it's in TSA, whether it's city council, when you want to pay your rates, mm. there is a problem. The system is down. And it's done purposely because there are people who want to be given something for the system to allow you to pay taxes. So that's why the government is frustrated. So they frustrate their own systems, and when they are not collecting as much as they should, they come and say, what else can we tax? This is not innovative, and at times, when you listen to them, it is like they are not the authors of this uh, booklet, call it the, the finance bill. It is like somebody authored for them, and they were given to them because how can Kimani abuse us one afternoon and the following day he says we realized this car circulation tax is going to tax uh, something against another law 
Another is saying, no, we have removed those taxes because we want to improve domestic industrialization. Why were they not aware of that? When did the information come to them that this thing is going to hurt industrialization in Kenya? This thing is against another act of parliament. This process does not start yesterday. It started almost at the beginning of the year, where ministries were consulting among themselves. They were also consulting members of parliament through the budget committee. And it is a process that it is back and forth. By the time it was in the cabinet, before Professor Ndungu read to us, they must have gone through some of the clauses to ensure that they don't do anything that is going to go against the law. So this is the way I want us to, to, to approach it. Secondly, let me emphasize the fact that it was peaceful, except in one area where I saw some stones being thrown. Now, that peaceful nature of demonstration should be encouraged so that we reduce the, the damage that is going to be done. Online fury that we witnessed is creating another revolution. Remember, ODM is a product of a fury against the system of the time, the banana and the orange issue. And it morphed, it morphed into a political entity. If this moves into a political entity, you will have a president that you have never heard of. Coming from either these young people or picking one of us and saying you are going to lead this particular onslaught. This is something that we must be responsible. Finally, so that I don't overstay my invitation, I think the president is a very frustrated man. Look at David indeed the other day, mm -hmm. telling us, take over the government or wait for the next election. How can somebody who calls himself economic advisor to the president say that in a tweet, telling us, if you, if you, if you wish, you can take over the government or you wait for the next election? This is what I call Utadu. And if you tell Kenyans that, Kenyans one day might occupy all these state houses and make it impossible for the president to land anywhere. Mm -hmm. And they might do when he's out of the many trips that he does every other afternoon. Mm -hmm. It is something that worries me, and I'm more worried than many of the people who think that this is just a small game. You cannot kill all these young people. And as Dr. Kidero said, the population of Kenya is under 30, almost 70% is under 30. Mm. And you see those people who are under 30, and they don't come from some places that you feared. And I'm also so happy, Dibal, it was multi-ethnic. You've been associating Luos with demonstrations. This time, all the ethnic communities, even in Elred, I could hear the Kalenjins talking to their members of parliament and talking to the president, who happens to come from Elred. These are some frustrations. And I, I think when we are here, let me stop being seen as opposition. Let me be seen as an elder in this country who wants Kenya to go beyond today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and of course you, you, you raise a very uh, good point, and I'll come to you, Professor Kindiki, that uh, the, the fact that we can see all this frustration is not really a matter of the finance bill itself, but there has been a festering wound that has been, of course, developing over time, and now it is exploding. This is uh, a frustration that has been there uh, for the longest time, and the governance maybe of the day is now tilting the scales to where we are right now. From your own estimation, uh, then, what, what needs to be addressed is not just the finance bill, but also the, the total governance of the country. It seems people are saying, oh, this particular government is being run ad hocery. Uh, policies are being made every which way, no, not looking even locally, even the foreign policy itself. It's not as robust as, as it used to be. You know, some of the proclamations that we make, inconsiderate of how also it is going to implicate us moving forward, leaning on one side, being non-aligned to NATO. I mean, those are things that are coming to bear. People are wondering, uh, are they thought through? Uh, what will be the implications later? Professor Kendiki. Thank you, Dibar. Um, may I start by saying that uh, every government and every year after um, a circle of uh, I think uh, I jumped. Uh, it, is, it is Dr. Kidero. Yeah, it's a great situation. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Can I stop and then we continue? Yes, yes, yes. Let right, him continue. continue. Let him continue. Okay, we'll come to you. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Thanks very much, but okay. I think I'll, I'll take a yeah, moment. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll shorten. Uh, no, no, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, looking at, um, looking at the, the keyboard uh, warriors. Yes. Um, uh, and uh, as um, Mr. Kirwa said, is, um, this was much less, I think it was spontaneous. Uh, the one thing that happened uh, yesterday or the last two days that we haven't seen before is no shops were broken into. Mm -hmm. Nobody was mugged. 
and um, you could see that they had a message. It wasn't just uh, just a demonstration. And for me, one of the things that struck and is something that we talk about every time is that uh, 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 we could save money uh, from corruption. They say that 30 uh, percent of government expenditure is actually wasted either corruption or not utilized property properly. You saw even when the president went to America, uh, some of the uh, some some of the assistance we got was uh, specifically to to to, to fight uh, corruption. And going through um, the finance bill, I haven't seen much emphasis mm. on. Uh, uh, on um, steps or strategies to be taken to, to fight corruption or to limit uh, corruption so that whatever money that is available uh, goes to our, our productive sources. I'll go back also to, I mean, as uh, President Kenyatta was uh, speaking, mm. uh, and I totally agree with him that you cannot plan a country on a five-year political circle. Mm -hmm. Because as he said, and which is true, and we've seen uh, it uh, with Ruto, uh, is that uh, the first two years we are busy sorting out messes, mm. though President Kenyatta never inherited messes from, uh, from Kibaki. But um, it is indeed true that uh, President Ruto did, um, did inherit um, uh, quite a lot of uh, economic mess which uh, he needed to sort out and pretty much, as uh, said two years, he's pretty much on the tail end of sorting it out yeah. and for him to embark on, uh, on, on uh, the, the, the productive agenda. I, for us to grow, we must, and Professor did say it, is that we must develop our industrial base, we mm -hmm. must develop uh, our economy, and uh, to do that, mm -hmm. we must limit, or we must come with policies and strategies of limiting uh, importation and develop, developing capacity and potential for local production. And if you go through the seven or eight sections of uh, this finance bill, it pretty much emphasizes on that um, giving concessions on um, uh, domestic production and uh, making importation a little bit expensive. Though one will say that it's a vicious circle if you make, mm -hmm. um, if you make importation, importation expensive because you have to import industrial, product, uh, industrial uh, machinery, then cost of production is going to be high. Mm -hmm. So I think what we need to be discussing is seeing how do we make a balance. I'll take, for example, I mean, the, the, the fastest growing um, uh, industry in Kenya is the telecommunication industry and um, for the for the longest time even mm. up to now mm. they've not been enjoying uh, the capital allowance uh, which has now been introduced in this and that this should um, stimulate um, stimulate uh, uh, investment in that particular sector and to a large extent it is going to 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 uh, benefit this uh, this economy. So I agree with Honorable Kirwa that uh, yeah, maybe we need to have a bus a, a bus eye overview, but uh, that bus eye overview must be based on the back of um, of uh, details, and that's why I go back to my opening statement that um, our leaders and more particular parliamentarians, mm -hmm. uh, Ministry of Finance, should have undertaken um, an exhaustive. Uh, analysis and presentation of their presentations so that when people are discussing, uh, uh, they discuss from a position of knowledge, not from a position of emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we'll, we'll insist that our beat, especially when you're looking at the manufacturing sector that has been plateauing over the years in this country, a very minimal growth that we've seen so far, even from the previous finance bill, uh, we know the, the cement, the clinker factory in this country also, we, the excess duty that was imposed has had a significant impact. Still, we can see as much as they want to, you know, dissuade people from importing, still they're stifling the, the, the industry in the country, especially with this finance bill. We have other manufacturers really contesting that particular viciously aspect of the excess duty. Um, we, we'll talk about it just more briefly as we tease it out. That's, yeah. that's, tr that's true. You know, I mean, when uh, President Ruto came into power, the biggest portion of our imports was on food products. 
and you'll recall them in uh, Gorogoro uh, of Maid, uh, when and uh, this is a topic that my <laughs> former yes, school yes, <laughs> yes, 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 passionate yes. about because <laughs> I know he is uh, he is a farmer. We've completely stopped yeah. importing. I mean, the subsidy we received on fertilizer. Um, Kenya is now able to feed um, uh, to feed itself, uh, which is a plus. But in just concluding, and uh, I take cue from what uh, these young men were saying yesterday, you find people who got into position of leadership hardly two years ago. Right now, uh, the amount of wealth they've accumulated mm -hmm. is unfathomable. Right. And these guys are seeing this. Right. Mm -hmm. So if the government was doing something about this um, uh, primitive, uh, let me call it, primitive accumulation, because of these are guys who've never worked mm -hmm. or done a day's job mm -hmm. in their life, all of a sudden, they're in politics, right. and they are, they, are, they are swimming in mm. cash. I mean, they don't even know um, uh, what, what to do with this cash. So mm. yes, I mean, let's do strategies, but also let's conserve um, what we have. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Mm. Professor yeah. Kiriki. Yeah, um, I was about to say when you gave me that chance before, Dr. Tari, um, um, that we need, we need um, the finance bill, we need, you know, the, it's going to finance the budget. So the budget is made. So the government now is looking for how it's going to finance that budget. So for me, I'm happy that it was the first reading. Let it go to the second round and to be, you know, ascertained as the, the act, if possible. But before then, I think in the, in the process, I think any contentious, maybe issues that arise uh, rising from the public participation. I think the members of parliament, because now it's in parliament, should be able to look into that keenly and try as much as possible mm. to delete anything that will bring a lot of, you know, contentions and they make the, you know, the country, you know, not go forward. But actually, I've never seen a country without a budget. We have not end of that, unless where there's anarchy and there's no, no government at all. In government, and every year, they need a budget. They need um, a finance act, which of course as a result of the finance bill, which is discussed, goes all the stages, still it's uh, attend, uh, attend as a, an act of parliament. And then now becomes legally a legal document, which can be used to finance the budget. So for us, I think, and the reason why I support the, this finance, the finance bill to go through all the necessary process is because we need really to fund the budget for development. But if there are contentious issues, as you saw the other, the other day when they were in the State House, the, 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 the Kenya Kwanzaa, you know, parliamentarians, um, elected leaders, they, they removed some of them. But the young people say, oh, this is not, you know, uh, enough. This is not what you wanted. We, we, are, we are not yet there. However, they should be listened, and then they, they find any, any area that will be highly contentious. But you see, the problem and the challenge that we face as a country is that something like now the finance bill may be hijacked by politicians, maybe so much those who are in the opposition, maybe they don't want the government, and then they, they misuse that opportunity now. So even if there is a goodwill, and whatever you know, section is there, they, it will just be opposed. That's why they are saying they, they, they reject it in its entirety and in totality. So for sure, if we do not have um, a finance bill and act to support the budget, then how are we going to run? And some people are saying, oh, let's use the previous, but the previous year, that's a different year with a different budget. This time round, we have another budget. And we need that budget to be funded. We look at the allocations now, for example, in, the, in our counties. If it doesn't go through, which, you know, because the, the one that we have, the 20, 2013 um, uh, Finance Act, it was to budget, it was to, to fund the budget of 20, 2024. So it's not legally any viable. 20, this, 2023, 20, 20, you 20, mean? 2023, sorry. And this one is for 2024, 25. So now, if we do not have, a, you, know, um, you, you know, the bill to go through to become an act of parliament so that now we fund the budget. So it means that if we go to the drawing board, we'll take more time and the politicking 
And in the process, what will happen, and people like using opportunity, is for people to attack their process, which was a good process, well intended, then becomes something political. And you know politics, they don't have a, a proper formula. It's not like where you elect members of parliament now, they are structured and law. When you allow people to politic, like now when, the, for example, when you see the, the, the parliament is dissolved and people are given three months to, you know, or three, three months or so to do the politics. See the mess that is there. So actually, since now we have a government, let us support this one, remove anything contentious, and then we, budget, we, we support the budget. But maybe in future, uh, our challenge here now is the members of parliament. They have a bigger challenge because this has not gone very well in their consistencies. And the very few of them who have talked about this uh, finance bill, most of them are quiet because they can see a lot of resistance. Maybe, I do not know, but I don't understand why members of parliament, they don't do their duties in their constituencies, trying to educate the young people. I tend to disagree a bit with the reading of the, the, this finance bill with my colleagues, because even me personally, I have not read that document, the whole of it, but I've looked at it in parts which are very, you know, sensitive and the ones that I feel that are very much, uh, you know, interesting. Others are just obvious. But, um, how, you know, people, right, they'll get just in scant information and then go with that scant information and make it to be, you know, you know public and to be a national issue. So I think let us um, uh, look into this matter, somebody, all of us, because we need this country. Whether you're in opposition, whether you're in the government, wherever you are, we need this country. And we need, actually, a finance act, a finance act to, you know, to, to finance the budget. Without it, then the running of the government will be very difficult. So President William Ruto has been very particularly intent on making sure that he stimulates the digital economy. Right. Yeah, and yeah. We have previously, and you've talked about can, it. Can I, can I? Yeah. yeah. So, what is the rhyme or reason then of actually taxing them that are on the streets who are decrying right. the fact Those that, oh, yeah, we need to look for alternative way of employment? And the digital is a highway. We've seen him also going and making, a, a, you know, a negotiation. Some of the big, big blue chip companies, let us, of course, the Microsoft, uh, with the, investing here at least $3 billion in this country. Uh, to stimulate, you know, the digital highway. But how, how then will you do that if the same people you want them to be employed are the same people who are decrying the punitive taxes on digital? And uh, we had this same, same, same in the previous 2023, 2024 financial year that was very contentious and they dropped it. So it seems it was just hived for a while. Then you put it back here, causing the same, you know, a furor as, as we can see it. Yeah, I, I think we, we are not just amending for the sake of amendment, but you know amendments goes with the changes that goes with that amendment. What am I saying? That we need as a country in the discussion, because this, this bill is already in parliament, issues about technology, which you are talking about the digital, you know, advancement. They should, you know, look into it. So it's not a matter of just writing a pen, you know, with a red pen, cancelling and cancelling and deleting and deleting. And I believe they have the knowledge and skills of you no know, trying to discuss now how they are going to help the young people because when you look at the young people by the way if i have to analyze the reason why the industry is not so much on the finance bill which actually is being used but it's about their frustrations some of them you have seen them there they say we have started our small businesses they are being taxed we want this one to be in the digital space, we are being taxed. And the, the, those are just challenges. And I think the government should be able now, as the parliamentarian discuss about technology, issues about industries, Thank issues you. about farming, Thank issues you. about livestock, you know, the food crops and all those things that bring and, you know, develop the economy. I think when you look at the, you know, amendment versus the advancement of, you know, these sector areas, which contribute much to the the economy of this country, I think it will have a good Thank finance you. Act. Thank you. Professor Omanya. Yeah, um, I still insist, on, and, and I agree with my colleagues here, actually, um, but, but, but I still insist that, um, uh, Professor, with all due respect, that uh, it is disrespectful totally to, to, to claim that Kenyans are not aware about what they are complaining about. On the other hand, I think it's also unfair uh, to suggest 
that somehow Kenyans don't want to pay taxes and, 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 and therefore deny government money for, uh, for uh, uh, you know, for running government. As uh, uh, Honorable Dr. Kedero had, had highlighted, the tax, uh, I mean, the Finance uh, Act is, um, you know, some 300 and uh, something, almost 400 odd pages with a lot of provisions. And um, if I may give an example uh, about what the young people were saying, uh, if you look at the, the so-called equal tax, you know, there are actually 29 items that have been proposed under equal tax. Mm -hmm. It includes our smartphones and it includes computers, it includes many things. But what people picked there was just one item, and that was sanitary pads. Yeah, because and it's common sense. We are saying we need this as a country, we need to provide this for our children actually. So why tax it? We are not saying that don't, don't do eco tax and don't tax all the 29. What we are saying is that, you know, this one item out of 29, please reconsider it, mm -hmm. because it is something that affects, you know, our, our, um, our lives in a very fundamental way. And uh, incidentally, that same government has listened to some of those things, incidentally. I'm not saying that uh, all has gone out. So, so le let's not dismiss it. If you're looking at the construction industry, where, where, where I spend a lot of my mm -hmm. time on, and, uh, and Dibala has highlighted it. This is a contradiction we started picking last year. Mm -hmm. We were saying, you want people to build more houses. And uh, we have a, a very high content of, uh, of, of, of Im, uh, imports. Mm -hmm. uh, almost all our steel is actually imported. And if, if you're in the construction industry now, you know that the cost of construction has almost doubled. So saying, here's a government that actually wants to do uh, people to, to sort out housing issue. But what are you doing around that to, to enable that to happen? And we're saying, look here, um, yes, consider the issue of steel. And is indeed, actually, Treasury has considered steel. But clinker is still being taxed, mm. which is a, 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 a very big component of that. We are saying uh, we are encouraging people to buy homes. But what, what are we doing? We've introduced tax for, for new homeowners. Who does that anywhere on, on, on earth? New homeowners are actually encouraged to, 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 um, you know, to actually uh, uh, buy, uh, uh, I mean, buy homes by, by you know, having them as tax exempt and so on. So, so the issue that we are actually looking at here uh, in a more, in a more uh, comprehensive way is to say, look here, there are some things that we expect. I mean, nobody is even uh, complaining about the 3% tax that mm. is now uh, being, being levied on health. Because they're saying, look, that is something that we have to, uh, 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 you know, we have to pay. Mm. Uh, there's no problem. The, the housing matter was, was sorted, sorted out by court. We are not actually raising those issues. Even when, when it comes to the digital total content, the, the, a number of things that have been listed there are actually quite a lot. But what you're saying is that, uh, you know, this young person on TikTok that is doing general content creation, largely because they're actually jobless, it does not make sense to then, you know, uh, impose uh, taxes on such, on such individuals. Look at pensions. Um, we are saying, look, I mean, uh, number one, getting your pensions from government is so complicated. At least these days it's, it's improved because of uh, private pension plans. And then you are saying that, okay, fine. Anybody who gets a pension of 15,000, you're gonna tax it. This is somebody that exists in the space of welfare. This is not somebody that is expected. In fact, the state is expected to support pe uh, those people. The state is actually not, not expected to, to then go ahead and make these people's lives uh, you know, a lot more difficult. The president himself uh, talked quite a lot about savings. Now, both savings and investments are to be sub subjected to tax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're saying, look here, Omenia, put your money on, on the stock market. You're saying the interest are in there is going to be taxed. And, 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 and these are the bigger things that we're saying that, that actually um, and we can go on and on. Uh, basic things, the, the issues that Moshima was talking about here, taxing sugarcane, now the uh, transportation, now the bread has been stopped and so on. You see, there are some things that we are saying are basic things. We are saying, look, our government must guarantee us food security. So our government should not tax us when we are trying to feed ourselves. Our government must, must be able to provide you know, basic jobs for the youth. Mm -hmm. So government should not act, actually tax these individuals when they're doing the same. So, and then we're going further to say, there are some things that government itself has declared they're going to do, and that's why I was, I was using the example of housing. Um, to, to then start introducing so many you know, uh, 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 um, bottlenecks in terms of uh, you know, taxes and excess mm -hmm. duties mm -hmm. and, and, and stuff like that is actually you know, counter, counter uh, productive. Uh, productive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what you expected actually in, in, in this um, 
um, in, 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 in the government selling us this, it was not, uh, uh, and there, there I, I, I agree with both of you, that, uh, you know, we, we are not necessarily nitpicking that this item, that, that item, that item. We need a coherent framework where we're saying, look here, yeah, we're going to create jobs, and this is how we're using the finance bill, you know, to, to, to ensure that investors are actually coming in. Um, if government, for, for example, believes that now we're producing so much food and so on, and, 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 and they want to stop it, then, you know, they'll say, oh, because of that, then we're doing one, two, three, four things. We are getting into savings, and government should be saying, okay, fine, this is how we're looking at the taxation regime and so on. So the issue is that, in fact, you may find that the things that people are opposed to are just a couple of pages within that tax thing. And the <coughs> reason why I'm opposed to them, actually, is, is because they, they don't make sense in terms of what government uh, intends to do, in terms of the situation that we are in uh, economically, in terms of those things that I was talking about. Uh, we, are, we are actually poorer. We are actually poorer. Uh, and, 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 and on top of this, of course, uh, uh, and, uh, and let me finish with that. You see, uh, there are countries that have got higher tax, uh, uh, basic, uh, uh, I mean, personal tax, uh, income tax, than Kenya. Many, many countries. In fact, many European countries are, are that way. And, and I've always said, I'm, I'm, I'm really not opposed to paying higher taxes. In fact, that's what it should be. But then we ask ourselves, so what happens? How come, at the end of the day, I work around business and I have no money? Mm -hmm. This is the problem. And it's a, ba a, ba a basic fundamental problem we have in our country that we pay taxes to government mm -hmm. and government provides no services so then we have to pay for those services again i'll give you an example a general mid middle income person this person pays his taxes then he goes home he has to pay for for for, for the watchman mm -hmm. that security is a service he has to pay for that this person has to pay for uh, for, for his own private health this government thing doesn't work even even these new ones will not work you, you will still uh, need a, 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 a private health scheme. This person has to pay school fees uh, for their children. Of course, now all the way to university. Uh, so, so, you know, basic things, this person has to house themselves. So, you know, basic things that government are meant to provide for, for, for the citizenry, the basic things that we pay taxes for are not provided. They're actually not provided adequately. So, so here I am. Uh, and, and, and you know this, uh, I sympathize with uh, a lot of Waishi because at any point in time, I'll, 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 give, you, I'll give you an example. Um, in, in the last one week, I was raising money for somebody who's, who's meant to do a kidney, kidney transplant. Personal money. This is a health issue that, that should be sorted out by government. Mm. You are raising man, money for death. You are raising money for school fees. In fact, I was raising money for school fees for, for, for some of my relatives and so on. So you see, on one hand, we're saying, we need to see services. We need, we need government to move in that direction to tell us, look here, you, you will have quality education. If you don't want to go uh, uh, through the government route, it is not because there's no quality education. It is just a, a personal choice that we're making. But this is the issue, that we are not getting quality services. Even water we are not getting. Really, thank you. Uh, that people have to buy water for themselves. Right, thank you. Huh? So, 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 so At this least when I was governor, you got water. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually true. So, 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 so you see, you have this situation where you are paying taxes, then you are not getting services, uh, then you are, you are paying for the services, as you are paying for the services, you are being taxed. Services that should have been provided by government. You know, you are actually being, you are, and you are helping government. It's a you, double taxation. You should right. actually be getting a relief. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I wanted just to ask though, the, the bit of the bill, because uh, when we had uh, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers also yes. they're trying the fact that we have export investment promotion levy yes. uh, and they were saying under the miscellaneous fees and levies act on raw materials used for manufacturing value addition this levy shall be detrimental to competitive or com competitiveness of local industries in both local and export markets through the increased cost of production and it suffice to say that in 2023 this said levy was imposed remember on uh, industrial raw materials such as uh, craft paper steel billets uh, cement clinkers what I was just raising ostensibly to support local manufacturing, but it seems now that is countermanding the effect as well. So this is still up there. The cost of co construction has since gone up by at least 40% yes. yeah. due true, to true. these unwarranted Correct. policies actions, true. regrettably. Also, the introduction of Eco Levy, which you've mentioned, Correct. on selected good uh, manufacturing, wouldn't belabor the point there as well. We have the proposal to increase the import declaration fund from 2.5% to 3%. Uh, which will negatively impact the cost of raw materials and intermediate products used for manufacturing value uh, addition. 
Uh, proposed 25 excess duty on vegetable oils. I think that has been revised. Uh, this was the proposal, and it, everyone was decrying the fact that uh, the edibles oils will just, the cost of oil will just shoot mm. if this is imposed as well. If you may just uh, highlight on those three, then I think we can get done with uh, the finance bill because now uh, we'll eagerly wait to see what happens on Tuesday. Each of you can just contribute. We, we, we finalize it. Professor? Yeah, correct. Uh, because this is right up your alley in the construction uh, industry, if uh, yes. you speak, yes. And, 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 and definitely, th this is one of the things that we have, we've actually been saying, that, that uh, here is the government wanting to, to promote uh, uh, construction. Incidentally, this is something I've discussed with the president himself and, 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 and cabinet. Um, they they actually inv invited me to speak about some of these things uh, uh, sometime last year. And, um, and I was telling them that... If you're one of the appointed advisors that... Uh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> in fact, I, 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 I'd been brought there because I was making noises on TV. <laughs> so he said, can, can you come and... and I, I, will, you, will you dare address us? But you see, uh, I, I gave that, that contradiction. And, and, and I, I pushed it to, to initially uh, when, when, uh, when, the housing, uh, um, when, when the housing program was being designed. And, 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 and the way it was designed was that um, um, there are quite a lot of incentives, uh, all the way from, uh, from materials to you know, the entire construction value chain, mm -hmm. to, to access to land, uh, to fast tracking uh, uh, PPPs and, and, and all, all those sort of things. Uh, so, so, so in a way, government had this broader thing, in fact, all the way to, to protection of mortgages and so on. So it, it, was, a, it, it was a comprehensive uh, uh, approach. Mm. For us in the construction industry, it wasn't even com comprehensive enough because we're saying you, you need to look at all types of housing and so on. But granted, what government had wanted to do uh, was to look at both the enablers, issues around land, for example. And of course, uh, G Governor, you're in the city and you, you, you know how difficult it was to get good land for, you know, for housing in the city and so on. Mm. So these things had been thought through quite a bit. What's the implication for land? Where is it coming from? Uh, you know, how, how, how is housing financed? Uh, what is the cost of finance? How can that be protected? Why are people, you know, you know falling off, you know, in payment of mortgages? Uh, how do we come in and, 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 and ensure that we have, uh, you know, mortgage guarantees that then protect, you know, the banks, the lenders, and all, all these sort of things? Um, the locally produced materials to imported materials and all the way till approvals and things like that. Those things have been looked at uh, that way. Then come the housing fund, where government actually comes and says, okay, but now we want to do, we, we, we now want to do housing. And this is where the incoherence comes in. Mm. So all these things that have been sorted out <laughs> in the previous government suddenly reappear. Mm. But, uh, you, you know, for taxation. Um, uh, the, 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 the real punitive one was still. Still, government decided to tax it at 17.5%. Mm. Yeah. And on, on top of that, the Kenya shilling was actually going down. So, so immediately with that, we actually found the cost of steel doubling. Mm. And that's one of the biggest costs in construction. The next biggest cost was cement. And uh, a major input that you've highlighted here is clinker. Clinker is still being taxed now. Uh, the, the taxes on it. So we're saying, look here, I mean, your, your, your policy is totally incoherent. What you're doing is counterproductive. It is actually defeating the purposes of, 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 of what you actually want to do. And, um, and, and, and if you look at it now, incidentally, that's partly why uh, the government program is not kicking up, uh, up as fast as, as, as we can. In fact, they're investing that money in the bonds. Why? Because there are all these obstacles the government has created for itself that are totally uncalled for. Um, we are saying, for example, uh, uh, the president was talking about, was talking about uh, general, general uh, you know, loans being, being lower than 10%. Now everybody who has a mortgage can tell you. The banks have revised them, thanks to government, uh, our government-owned borrowing, to 18%. Mm. Uh, so, 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 so you are getting this poor person. You, you are give, giving them. You want to give them uh, a liability. That's what it is. You want to give them a mortgage debt. Mm. Uh, and 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 uh, and um, the rates that you are talking about here for for a lifetime is exactly that high. Mm. So, so basically, that's what I'm saying. And I've just picked uh, the construction industry to to do an illustration that uh, that when we are discussing finance bill in relation to this, we should be asking ourselves what does government intend to achieve. And is what government doing enabling us to achieve it or not? So on this one, you are, you are hitting supply big time. Thank you. In fact, nobody, nobody in the right sense can, can build now because the cost of, of construction has doubled. And then <laughs> nobody in the right sense can buy now because, again, the cost of credit has more than doubled. Mm. So, so how will your housing policy work 
And that's what we're saying. At least get some people with, with an average brain to, to, to just sort out, you know, some of these basics so that you don't sound like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need to take a short break on that particular note. Uh, making like, some people like with that. an average brain. <laughs> right, uh, uh, we, we take a break right now. When we circle back, of course, we shall. The issue was of, because uh, everyone was also raising questions regarding the, the housing levy and how now that is being uh, yeah, invested. In, this, in, 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 in the stocks, right? This was for well, uh, yeah, it was for housing in the first place. So, uh, yeah, we can't also keep this money idling. So, why are you collecting it? You know, with all this uh, oomph uh, yeah, and no, vigor, no, and then go to invest it in, in the stock in, 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 in the bonds. Uh -huh. And what are the, these things that you're talking about? All right. They've made transfer of land. They've made, uh, exactly. All right, we take a short break. We take a short break. We take a short break. You're watching Mongoza today here on Morning Prime. We circle back with more. But you see.